Welcome to Not The Andrew Neil Show, an edition of the 2nd of May 2012. Um, unusually we are meeting on a Wednesday, probably because there are council elections tomorrow. Today my guests are Norrie Stewart, political cartoonist, Danica McGlone, political savant, yeah. we'll call him, <laughs> and uh, myself Stuart Lockhead, as per usual. So today, we, we predicted what people would talk about. It would be Salmond and Murdoch, because that's what the opposition have been banging on about for the last 10 days in Scotland, demanding an inquiry. Anyway, we still have a formula we like to run to, and um, so I'll we'll start off with the performances of the four party leaders, and not if you could lead. Well... Lamont got very, very, very hot under the collar today. Got positively beetroot red. Um, still, she's still not very good at it. You know, she still stumbles and I don't know. She's, she seems to lack authority, and this should have been ground she was sure footed on. This is what she does well the bulldog attack thing. But nah, nah. I'll give her five. I'm maybe a bit biased because I'm getting very bored with it. Uh, Ruth Davids, again, very professional, hit the, hit the questions. Uh, I was quite impressed with her. Again, give her a seven. Willie Rennie, quite good to begin with, and then just kind of let it slip. Um, I'm sorry, it's just, it, it doesn't have any presence for me, so he gets a four. Oh, pressed him. Alex actually got a bit flustered today at times. He stumbled at the start, I thought. Yeah, he wasn't too sure-footed. But, as I always say, he's still Division 1 to their Division 2. But um, not a great performance from Alex. An 8, maybe. An 8. There we go. Monica. Well, Lamont made very little impression on me. <laughs> That's fair enough. <laughs> as, as I turned up late for that. But uh, Ruth Davidson, uh, yeah, very impressed by her. She's got pl plenty of spark. You know, it's funny, I, I found myself wondering that if you just change the hairstyle slightly, she's sort of like Alex Salmond. Don't you think she's got that same... She's probably <laughs> decided to learn from him, a bit like yeah. Cameron decided to learn from Blair. Yeah, she has what I'd call a sort of smiley spunkiness that, that is definitely reminiscent of, of Salmond. She'll probably go far. Oh. Not in Scotland, necessarily. No, I don't think so. She'll be a lord at some stage. Um, yeah. I thought William Rennie... He has the sort of warm, magical glow of a man with a, a very low IQ, but who doesn't know it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a bit cruel, but I, I can follow that, yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and strange, he had that smug, self-satisfied stuff when he brings up a zinger. Something that when he wrote it, he said, ah, that'll have salmon on the ropes. And, and, and yet never somehow does. Um, actually, just back to Ruth Davison for a second. Did you notice that there was this really sleazy looking guy behind her, to the right, chewing gum? I think we have to ask the question, does Ruth Davidson have a pimp? <laughs> it's a very important thing to know. I need to go back and have a look at the, when, they, yeah. when they put out the yeah. recording later. There were a number of things like that I was looking for today. But uh, We need to do outtakes. We need to do like a forensic examination outtake thing, like CSI, like slow it down, zoom yes, in. Yes, just, you're right. just the people in the back. Because just, who, just whoever the... was sitting behind Lamont was, well, you thought she was eating her lunch. I yeah, did thought somebody was eating, eating a sandwich <laughs> right behind the lawn. Maybe it was just tuna sweet, but it just did look odd. There are some odd-looking people there, except for the Lib Dems. They all look incredibly thin and lean. Well, know? they actually used to, when he first took over, Willie Rennie always had Tavish Scott, the previous leader, right behind him, and it always looked as though Tavish was just pulling strings, <laughs> as if, this is my puppet, I'll get him to speak. Who's the guy behind him now, though? You know, the sort of thin, kind of shallow-looking guy. I think possibly that was the the other MS, little bit of MSP, the one from Orkney. Oh, what was there? Is there only the two or something? No, there's five. Well, but there are only two constituency MSPs. There's uh, five altogether. Shetland and they, can, Orkney. they can go to the conference in a taxi. Yes. Uh -huh. A black cab. They're okay for that. And so the guy right behind him, his constituency. So somebody actually voted for him specifically. Possibly. That's amazing. Uh, and then Alex Salmond. <laughs> I, I thought, yeah, as usual, like just like you say, in a different league, he can bounce the things around. He's he's clearly uh, the, the, the best uh, performer in there and I would imagine you can't always kind of transpose these things one for one but in general somebody who can perform like that is also probably somebody who's better at operating yeah well I have to say today I thought I was expecting someone to perform well because if the SNP government agreed 
to move FM queues forward from th the normal date Thursday to today, bearing in mind that that is a risk the day before an election. You can only make a mistake the yeah. day before an election. You can't win an election on the day before, but you can make a dreadful mistake. The SNP, especially Salmon, must have assumed that he had he was be well prepared with whatever was coming. So I made that assumption before I sat down. I watched Joanne Lamont and I thought, it's big spectre, I have to agree with you, Nori, there. She just got redder and redder. I wrote down, she just seemed to get redder and redder, and then she started stumbling on her, on her speech because she can never wing it, she's always got to read it. I'd give her a five. Um, Ruth, I have to agree with both of you. I thought Ruth was in form, and as I said, I think she'll go far. And she might be ennobled quite soon just to get her into the House of Lords and we'll use her in London. But I bet she'll probably, she'll, they'll probably keep her now, the Tories. Cameron will, will keep her until the, the so referendum. They'll use her till 2014. That's it, basically. What yeah. was happening in 2014? We'll be independent, and all the Scottish Lords will be thrown out of the House of Lords. Really? Something like that. That's awesome. So I'll give her. Sort of I'll give her a six. Yeah, no, I'll give her a six. Uh, Willie Rennie, I thought he was absolutely useless. Oh, I got, I've got nothing to say. I, I put it out right about it. It's not even worth looking at. We'll just say give him a three or something. Uh, up till this week, what impressed me about him was he came up with a well-rounded, sensible, grown-up question. That's what failed him this week. He just jumped on the bandwagon. Yeah. It would have been far more effective if he'd come up with a question with real substance. Well, uh, to be honest, I was surprised that Ruth Davis has gone on her question. I thought she, because the last couple ah. of weeks, she's, gone, she's come in with a different topic from the Labour Party, but this yeah. time, decided to gang up. She was more impressive on the, on the issue than Joanne Lamont. Well, I mean, she, she made the mistake of calling it an English inquiry. Oh, that was a, a British inquiry. A Tory calling it an English inquiry. But what she did have was this idea that Samad may well have broken the law. That was quite a challenge. That was that and was the first only time will tell. We need to look into that. But this thing, I mean, they're all well. Lamont isn't, but Willie and uh, Ruth both hit on this. Were you hacked, Alex? This seems to be the the idea they're trying to sow in, in, the, in the voters' minds for tomorrow is Salmon has been hacked. Murdoch knows too much about him, and that's why Salmon. Is protecting him. That's the story that they're trying to get across oh, do you think to the so? voters. Yeah, I think that's what they're trying to achieve for tomorrow's vote. I would have read that as, as just the fact that, that Salmond was hacked but has come to a private agreement with, with uh, uh, Murdoch and that it isn't a question of him being blackmailed, it's just a question of him protecting a friend. That he's in bed with, with Murdoch in, in different ways. I would be surprised if Salmond was hacked. Really? I, I think the advantage to being a victim as things stand now. Uh -huh is great enough that he would have admitted to it. I think he's going to be able to stand up and say, I wasn't hacked, my name was not in the book, so nobody's blackmailing me. Uh -huh. Jobs, jobs, jobs. But who said, did, did anybody, is that just our fevered imaginations or did somebody yeah. actually say, no, nobody, nobody said he's been hacked. So that's our interpretation. Because I no, but I, I think no. Well, uh, no, they did. They said they said, were you hacked? So that's well, they asked, they've asked the question. But, but nobody I've, said he was blackmailed. I've seen nothing anywhere. There's been no evidence that he's been hacked. Nothing. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. Nobody said it anywhere. That and they I just think if him. he had been hacked, yeah. he would have come out and said, look, why should I be friends with this guy? He hacked me. Yeah. Right. I, I think the advantage to being one on the victims list would have been so great that he couldn't have resisted. But actually, what about the long-term advantage? Because maybe he needs to keep... I mean, you've got to... No matter how much people are, 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 are all hanging... Rupert Murdoch now, you've got to presume that News International are still going to be a force and that's going to be very important well, to have I, them on side or to have them at least favourable if Scottish independence becomes... As safe. I said to Stuart earlier, I'm becoming devil's advocate with this one. Yeah. I think what was done by the Culture Committee was outrageous. For, but them, for them to come out and say that he's unfit when yeah. it wasn't part of their remit, they didn't question him on it, they didn't discuss it apparently at any level within the committee that's all about what's his name the labor guy tom watson Kurt, and his yeah. book getting his boot in yeah. and it leads to a huge problem now murdoch if he gets found to be unfit by ofcom can go to court and say ofcom were influenced by 
Very good point. That committee. Really? Uh -huh. so, essentially, so you're saying it wasn't in their remit, they weren't, just, that was something they couldn't have said. No part of their remit, uh, it's, it's nothing to do with them, it's Ofcom's job to, to decide whether he's a fit and proper person. And quite frankly, our experience of Ofcom is, they probably need told. <laughs> well gentlemen, uh, we don't, I don't want to drag this on today, we're just running a little over time. Anything you'd like to say in sum, in, to sum up today? Scottish politics, politics continues to delight and amuse me. <laughs> no, right? I'm just, I'm just ashamed. I mean, <laughs> seriously, this is bullshit. I have to say, um, all I can say was that uh, there was a lot of heat, no oh. light. Like every election broadcast. Yes. Thank you very much. Till the next time. <laughs>